Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a keloid and this is essentially a skin covered nodule that is very firm in texture and this arises because of excessive scar tissue formation. So we have this oval firm nodule that extends beyond the confines of the original wound. So on the cut surface, we can see, of course, that this is covered by benign epidermis, which comprises stratified squamous epithelium and also this keratinized layer of anucleate cells on top. And in many areas, there are these pink, thick, ropey collagen bundles on high magnification. They almost have a glassy or highline look. And this is very characteristic of keloid. These collagen bundles are laid down by fibroblasts. So while these ropey bundles are present in some areas, in other areas we don't really see that very pink appearance. Instead, we see this hypertrophic scar tissue formation where there are lots of myofibroblasts, these spindly cells, and also fibroblasts. Again, very spindly cells that lay down collagen. Certain ethnic groups are more prone to formation of keloids, for example, patients of African descent. So let's correlate this with the gross appearance of the cut surface. And here is the cut surface of a keloid. We can see that there are a lot of these whitish fibers which correspond to those dense collagen bundles. And of course, this is covered by skin. So typically, this lump would appear several months after the initial injury or initial incision. And earlobe is a very common location for a keloid to occur. And this is usually secondary to ear piercing. In summary, this is an example of a keloid, which is a phenomenon of excessive scar formation. And the classical histologic appearance is the presence of these thick, ropey collagen bundles with interspersed fibroblasts. This particular case also has accompanying hypertrophic scar tissue with lots of myofibroblasts as well as fibroblasts, which are laying down these thinner bundles of collagen. Thank you.